if I could, the, a discretionary process, typically you, you, you give the elected officials the opportunity to hear all the facts before they render a, a decision. Uh, and, and so I, I'm trying to keep these two guys from having to be put totally on the spot here, but since the application isn't really complete and we haven't really gone through the environmental process, not all of the information is out there. As I mentioned previously, though, it is discretionary, and so you know they do have the right, you know, to vote one way or the other, whether they like it or not. But um, it, it is typical for an elected official to have all the information, um, whether put on the spot or whether it's an up or down. A question for you: What's the annual budget of Yuba County? Uh, the county minister. Oh, I'm sorry. The annual budget countywide is approximately 160 million. 160 million. So according to 440, $4.40 per ton, and the suggested amount in which they were going to bring in of uh, 400,000, that gives us about 1% of our annual budget in revenues. 1% One, 1 of our annual budget in order to bring in 400,000 tons annually of level three or level four material, which is one of the very few sites, maybe maybe one other site, I'm not sure, that Recology has in, in their corporation in order to bring this material to. From the, from the show of hands I've seen here, 1% um, of the annual budget doesn't seem like a big incentive to the county to accept this project. Well, the liability is a good question, and I would think that within the contract, within the agreement, there should be substantial penalties should we ever have any leak into this water reserve the size of Florida's Bar that sits out in South County. But now, as we know, the wishes of the people and the wishes of the voters in this room can only affect one supervisor, and there's five on the board. And, and we've seen many, a, many an issue tip three to two against the people. But of, of the supervisor that represents this district and the show of hands that he saw of the people opposed to it, would you be willing to help us create the obstacles to defeat it? There are some options here. One of them might be the increase of tipping fees. Is that a negotiable? Is that a done deal? I don't, the tipping fees are not part of this uh, amendment request. Are, are they locked in permanently forever and ever? No. Are they renegotiated? Uh, I'm not exactly sure what the process is, but I know that there is a process for changing so could tipping fees be a leverage to enforce the will of the people by making it not profitable to bring that in? As I understand it, uh, there can be a tipping fee for <coughs> this area, there can be a tipping fee for an area within the let's say, ten, just 10 miles out uh, there could be an additional or different tipping fee if you're from 10 to 20 miles out and then a fee for if you're farther out. You know, there could be different tipping fees depending on where you're located or how far away you're looking from the area. So we could use tipping fees to make it economically infeasible to bring trash from San Francisco. Um, well, I would say, it's my understanding, you can make the tipping fees different for different areas. I, I don't think you could just say, for San Francisco, we're going to make the tipping fees this. But you can see, if you're this, as far away as San Francisco is, Everybody who's that far away will pay the tipping fees of X number of dollars. If I could add to that, in the, the 2000 amendment to this use permit for the Austrian landfill, um, if you could say one of the bright spots in that amendment, uh, but one of the one of the conditions that was added was that the board of supervisors did have the discretion to adjust the tipping fee based on point of origin, and so that that was something that was. Added so for those of us who may be opposed to it, that would be one leverage tool that we could have to restrict this outside garbage. And the bound of it, that's what I'm hearing, yes? Well, my feeling is whether or not this is approved or not approved, I think it's very important for the county to look at those uh, post-fees of tipping fees and re-examine how 
how much they are, the levels, and how much they can charge. Clearly, it's, it's not economically feasible for the college to, to truck that driver from San Francisco. That's why they want to rail it. Um, and if that amendment's not allowed, then they can't bring in drivers by rail. And so their only ability to do that is by truck. Uh, Would be a better damage you know, The farther away you are, the more expensive that is, obviously. And, and I think that the county should be looking at um, changing our tipping fee schedule uh, in order to ensure that, uh, I mean, I, I don't want to say that I want to change that for the primary purpose of keeping people bringing garbage to the cabinet, but I would say that instead that I mean, want those tipping fees to be at a level such that if they choose to try and bring that to the cabinet, that it will be not just one percent of the county budget that we're looking at in terms of what's coming in. And if and if one of the consequences of having those higher tipping fees is that people choose not to come to the county. Right? So that's just good business. You're saying that rail would be another option to opposing the rail system would be another option for those that are opposed to try and use this leverage in order to reduce the, the current request is to allow, rather than have it brought in just by trucks, the only way they can bring garbage to the landfill is through trucks now. And they want to amend that use permit to allow garbage to be brought in by rail. Uh, and, and so that, that and also allow um, some of that garbage that would be used as an alternative cover for it and so forth, not to have it against their daily cut. But that's, those are the requests that they're making now. Um, Can you think of any other leverage tool that these citizens who have given up their evening to demonstrate their opposition could use to reduce the amount of outside trash in the... I, you know, I, I, I don't, it's not that I don't agree with it or, or anything, but I don't want to become part of something that's going to do all that and then later have to recuse myself from considering the matter. I appreciate that. Uh, but I would think that this whole issue doesn't affect just the Wheatland area. Right. This is the landfill for the entire Yuba County as well as all of Sutter County. And I would, I would think that residents in Yuba County as well as Sutter County uh, would be interested and want to know what are we going to do if instead of 50 years from now when that landfill would have been full, it's now going to be 20 years from now, what are we going to do with our ground? Yeah. And so I, I would not, and when you talk about the people here speaking to one supervisor, that's true. That's not to say that every single resident of Yuba County and, and the supervisor that represents them also doesn't have a real interest in what happens with that land. That's a very, very good point. I mean, it's, their, it's their garbage as much as it is our garbage that's going to that land. And when it's full, where are we going to take our garbage? I know Sutter County a few years back had a um, very controversial issue um, about the new town being developed in South Sutter County, which was going to bring in, what, 50, 60,000 more people? change the voting dynamics, change the tax revenues and everything. And, and, and they thought enough of the citizens of the county to put it on a ballot measure. Well, what's the chances of putting this on a ballot measure? 